Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Well, news broke today that Trump employee number four uh, has flipped. I did a reading on this earlier. This is the Mar-a-Lago IT worker, Yusil Tavares. Um, you'll know him uh, from the news that was out there that um, D. Oliveris, who's one of the, Carlos D. Oliveira, who's one of the um, uh, co-defendants uh, with Donald Trump and Waltine Nada, he, uh, he's the property manager. D. Oliveira went to the IT guy and said, hey, we have to divert, uh, delete the server. Trump wants the server deleted. And the IT worker said, I don't think I've got the authorization to do that or the, the permissions to do that. And uh, then D. Oliveira said, well, what are we going to do? This is what the boss wants. And I'm paraphrasing. And in his testimony in uh, the grand jury, um, Tavares, employee number four, uh, basically said he didn't know anything about anybody trying to delete camera footage. And his lawyer at the time was Stanley Woodward. And Stanley Woodward is representing him, <clears throat> De Oliveira, Walti Nada, and such. And uh, Jack Smith said, you know, you've got, a, you've got a problem here, a conflict of interest problem, because you're representing three of these defendants. And um, uh, basically, they brought up uh, Tavares on perjury charges because they had some evidence that he did know something about the conspiracy to delete uh, that security footage and obstruct justice. And then uh, Tavares switched lawyers. He dumped Woodward, took a, <clears throat> a public defender and changed his plea. Well, basically uh, recanted his testimony to the grand jury and came up with new sworn testimony that contradicts Bef uh, before what he said that he didn't know anything about uh, conspiracy to delete that uh, information that he actually did know people that were trying to do that and now <laughs> you know this just strikes home that Woodward would have to cross-examine somebody who used to be his client <clears throat> and he can't do that um, and that's a case before Judge Eileen Cannon but the news broke today that uh, Tavares actually struck an immunity deal with uh, prosecutors and will testify against Trump and company um for his part, <laughs> um, Woodward wrote in the filing uh, on Wednesday that he played, quote, no role, unquote, in Tavares' cooperation and that the prosecutors did not offer Tavares the cooperation deal until he got a different lawyer. Woodward asked Judge, who I've got to believe is Judge Eileen Cannon, to block Tavares from testifying in any eventual trial. Wow, there's a lot of drama with this. Sorry it takes me three minutes to get into this one, but there's a lot of backstory. First off, first question we're going to ask. This is not the one. I, what I'm really interested in is how much trouble is Woodward in, because he's in trouble. And how much trouble is Cannon in, or is she going to get into? But let's start with Tavares. All right, so they offered him immunity deal, which would seem to suggest that the information he has is valuable enough to grants him immunity from perjury. So he's not a th he's not a throwaway witness. Now, maybe by having his testimony, you can show intent and it'll help uh, convict of an obstruction charge. Um, but how will Tavares' testimony impact the case? Entertainment purposes only. Okay. It's, you know, young guy with a small amount of information. It's just, a, it's a small piece of the puzzle. This is not the, the ha-ha-ha gotcha moment type thing. This is going to be um, a smaller piece. Now, mind you, also, the Page of Pentacles is my card for election interference, just so you know. So it's also dealing with election interference. But I don't think it's a huge, I don't think he's a huge player in this. He's got a small amount of information. But that small amount of information, this is intent and planning. So his information shows the intent. You know, uh, basically, Trump and company got a got a, a subpoena i guess it, it is from the department of justice to save all that security footage they they subpoenaed it they wanted it so trump immediately sends people out to delete it what's underneath it yeah there's the backroom dealings on it he's gonna Tavares is gonna talk about how the instructions that were given to get rid of this information because the doj wanted it and the back and the backroom meetings that were going on and who was saying what to everything because this is no longer hearsay it's hearsay um, for him to say that Donald Trump ordered it, it's not hearsay for him to say Oliveris said Trump wanted it because he was a direct participant in that conversation. If he has any connection with Trump telling him that, 
then you can say Trump said that and it's not hearsay. In the past, betrayal. <laughs> yeah, you know, that sword cuts both ways. I'm just going to say right now, that sword cuts both ways. Yeah, because it was the first thing. Betrayal. Oh, Donald Trump wants loyalty. You betrayed me. You know what? You ask somebody to lie. You ask somebody to commit perjury. You ask somebody to go to prison for you. That's not exactly loyalty, is it? That's a betrayal, too. Absolutely betrayal. But, you know, Trump and company started it. And he's now going to get himself out of it. Notice you got the three swords. Nada, De Oliveira, and Trump. And he's extricated that from himself. He's he's cast that off. Um, current situation, I think you know he's going to be. He'll testify. He'll testify in front of the jury, and I think he'll do fine with his testimony. It's not going to be. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see if Eileen Cannon prevents him from testifying. Ultimately, I see him testifying in front of that jury for this for this case. Overarching, he's going to describe. Uh, about the conspiracy and uh, what was done, uh, you know, come over here, Trump, no, Trump telling this guy to come over here and do this act. Maybe he'll even tell you how this stuff got deleted. So uh, maybe that's also helpful to the case of that. Wouldn't it be neat if they actually had a backup copy? Oh, that would be amazing. <clears throat> but it's, it's, it's the lovers in the planning that went into it. So he's going to expose the conspiracy to get rid of that information and who did what. So it, it, it's a small piece because it, I think they would have been able to prove it to the jury pretty much anyway. But this is somebody who was in the room and could put names and faces with what was being uh, told. It just, it's, it's just a way to really sign, seal, and deliver this thing. Yep. And... It it absolutely crushes. Maybe the biggest effect, effect it has is that Trump really has no defense against this. Um, you know, you can't just say, "Oh, you know, the who knows what happened to that tape? It it went somewhere." No, you have somebody testifying. No, you purposely destroyed it, and they have enough supporting evidence to prove it. Um, and the jury the jury's going to believe him over these other guys. They are not going to believe these other guys. Um, I think in previous readings, I, I showed that uh, Nada probably does flip, but he, he's, he's just so counting on Trump to, to get him out of this and trusting Trump and everything like that. He doesn't understand he's a patsy and he's a fall guy and he's going to be, you know, one of the first people shoved under that bus when the bus comes. Like somebody in an abusive relationship. Somehow they're going to be the one who's different. They're going to. God, I, I use that that metaphor a lot. But it's, it fits. And as I've also mentioned, many of my audience have been in abusive relationships, and they know what it's like to be with an abusive partner who manipulates you. And you, you know, you should have seen the warning signs going in. You hear about the ex girlfriends and stuff like that, and they share stories. And you think, oh no, he'll never do that to me. Yeah, he will. <laughs> Or she, as the case may be. Okay. Judge Cannon. <laughs> Stanley Woodward. Stanley Woodward's asking Judge Cannon to uh, not allow this guy to testify. Now, were I the judge, I would say, yeah, he's allowed to testify. Why not? You can cross. You can cross-examine him if you want to poke holes in his story. I don't see why he wouldn't be able to testify. But we're not talking me as a judge, are we? We're talking about Judge Cannon. So, <laughs> what will Judge Cannon do with this situation? That's always a fun one, isn't it? She's a she's a pistol, that one. She's a wild card. <sighs> Loose Cannon. <laughs> judge Eileen Loose Cannon. How's Miss Cannon going to... Uh, is she going to let this guy, is she, she going to let him testify? <clears throat> mm, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced about this. I was going to do a full card. I think I'm going to do a full six. We have five of swords. This is narcissism. This is when it all costs. And I think she sees some problems with this and that she might be able to get him, 
get Woodward out of his out of his problem because you still had that Garcia hearing because uh, Woodward is representing so many people where there's a conflict of interest and this guy flipping just is a huge illustration of the problem. She owes somebody favors and they're calling in those favors. She is going to work out some way that this guy can't testify or his testimony is extremely limited. And she's going to be judged for it. This uh, this is going to be yet another one of those things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jack Smith has done a number of things that have shown that she's not competent as a judge for this trial. I don't know if this will be the one that breaks the camel's back, but I think she's not going to rule appropriately on this. Four of Cups in the past. Um, this is canon making weird rulings that aren't the norm for an unbiased judge. And the evidence is piling up that she has a preference and a bias. And this is just one more item in that list. <clears throat> She's, um, she is trying to take care of Trump and his clients. Again, she owes favors to Trump and to the Federalist Society for her position, and she's paying back those favors, <clears throat> maybe to the detriment of the rest of her career, but she's trying to pay those back. She's gotten away with it, well, other than the, um, the special master, that got beat down, but she's going to try and make a compelling reason why he's not allowed to testify. And I think she's going to be successful, at least on the short term. Celebration. Um, now, I'd love to say that this is the appeal and they win the appeal and uh, the prosecutors uh, celebrate. But I'm going to guess, I'm going to go a little darker on this one. I'm going to think she figures out a, a way to try and limit or minimize his testimony. And it's doing it to pay back this favor that she's got going on here. Let's see what the outcome. But now that's the intent. Let's see what the outcome is on this one. Victory. Um, okay. I think she's going to get away with it. I think Woodward's going to get away with this one, despite there being judgment on this. I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to say that this is the appeal, the, the thing's overturned, and there's victory for Jack Smith. But I think, given the, um, the fight on here... That she's going to do that. I mean, really, he should be able to testify. Because this card kind of fixed both of those. It's that fight. Um, yeah. yeah I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i go with the unpopular one on this one. I think she's going to... Uh, I think she's going to get away with this one. Or at least on the short term, she's going to get away with this one. But, you know, again, that victory card. That Six of Wands. And thank you to Libby from Meister Tarot. That Six of Wands on the low energy is, look at me. So she's calling a lot of attention to herself. This is one of those things that you're trying to do kind of slyly on the down low. And uh, I think it ends up calling attention to herself. Okay. Um, so you know, we'll find out on that one. Let's see if I'm right on this one or not. I'd like to be wrong on this one. And I'm okay with being wrong on this one. Uh, how about Mr. Woodward? Stanley Woodward. He's the, the lawyer in all this. Is he in any type of legal peril with his um, handling of his clients? Because I think one of the reasons why he doesn't want this guy to testify, what would one of the questions you would ask as a prosecutor is? You changed your testimony from the grand jury to now. Why? Attorney-client privilege, I think, is a unidirectional thing. I think it's to protect the client's conversations with the lawyer. So if the client said, my lawyer, I was under uh, guidance from my lawyer to misremember that. I don't know if you legally could say that. I don't know if it's true. We know from... Uh, Good Lord, that's um, uh, Mark Meadows, uh, Casey, Cassidy Hutchinson. 
Sorry. I kept wanting to say Casey because I just did a reading on Florida and Casey DeSantis post, popped up. Cassidy Hutchinson basically was told by her lawyer to not remember so much. And then when she got a new lawyer, she could suddenly was allowed to remember things again. I think we've got a whole lot of that going on here. And I don't think Woodward wants that to get out. That's why he's trying to get this thing squashed. And I think that's why Cannon's going to do that because it's kind of a big deal. All right. Woodward, what kind of trouble is he in with this? He's, yeah, he's trying to get away. He is trying to get away with stuff that he shouldn't be doing. And he knows ethically he's not supposed to be doing stuff, but he's doing it anyways. <laughs> and there's the Ace of Cattle prods. Um, strong action. Yeah, he's he's doing he's being given um, guidance what to do, and then he takes you know, you know, you know, steal this steal this case for me, and he's like, okay, boss, I got it. So he gets out and he does the things that he needs to do to try and win these cases. Ethics, morals, be damned. Um, election interference, but it's also you know, page in this case, this is also. Um, yeah, another example of like uh, uh, Tavares here. So like with Tavares, he's done this. I'm sure he's, you know, he's instructed Walti Nada and Oliveira to do the same thing. If you're going to tell one of them to lie, you're going to tell them all to lie. Because basically now you've got a problem <coughs> that Tavara, Tavares said that De Oliveira came down and told him to delete it. Under oath. They both are under oath saying that. Now, they're both under oath saying nobody told them to do it. Now, one's under oath saying nobody told them to do it. The other one is under oath saying Oliveira told me to do it. And he said Trump was the one who instructed him. You get, Both stories can't be right. And you can't agree to disagree. They're both under oath. Somebody's lying. Who's the one who's more likely lying? In this case, it's going to be D. Oliveira. And um, this guy has no problem with ethical murkiness when it comes to these guys that are that he's supposed to be representing. He's not representing their interests, he's representing Trump's. In the past, the star, he's been, uh, this guy has been a star lawyer for Trump. I don't think he was that particularly well known before that, but he has taken on all these court cases for Trump. And you know, right now he's the star and the darling of right-wing media, I suppose, because of this. He probably, at one point had a promising career too. I know I read on him. <clears throat> um, but yeah, he was, I think he was like a lawyer that kind of thought out of the box or something like that. But anyways, yeah, he was a star that's in the past. His current situation though is the three of wands. It's the scheming and the planning and getting, rid, and getting ready for opening day. So this is the big idea. This is getting ready for what's to come, getting ready for court cases, getting your uh, your witnesses set up properly and making sure your witnesses know exactly what to say. Now, in most cases, when you're getting your witnesses knowing what to say, it's they're telling the truth. But when you throw the Seven of Swords energy in there, it's not telling the truth. It's covering Trump's butt is what it's doing. Ace of Cups. <clears throat> He's under, you know, this, these are kind of emotionally tumultuous times. Got a pair of aces here, by the way. Um, he's going to, it's going to be, it, it, it's him emotionally manipulating these people. He's probably actually pretty good at playing on emotions in a less, in a calmer way than Trump does it. So he's like the good cop and Trump's the bad cop. Trump's the one that's going to yell at you. He's the one who's going to try and reason with you and manipulate you that way. I think he's kind of a manipulator in that in that regard. You don't expect him to be that way, but he is. Lesson to be learned is the Knight of Swords. The thing, though, <clears throat> while he's racing to save Donald Trump, when people flip, like uh, uh, like Tavares did, this causes a problem. They're not expecting somebody <clears throat> to bolt from the camp. <clears throat> and go out and share the information that shows the um, the obstruction of justice. Out comes the Empress. 
He's not in so much trouble yet. I think he's got enough cover with this, at least with Cannon on the short term, that he's not going to be held accountable. That's unfortunate. But that's kind of how I see it. The Empress is, uh, you know, taking care of things. You know, it could be lazy, laziness and stuff like that. But he's doing enough that he's, well, maybe this is him being taken care of by Trump. He's being well compensated for everything he's doing on this one. But he may not face consequ legal consequences for what he's doing in regards to to this. And again, part of that is probably because uh, there's not going to be that testimony, if I'm right on that one. So it's not brought out to the forefront. Maybe there's an ethics complaint that's lodged against him or something along those lines. But it sounds like he's got himself a protector. That, Ace of, that Empress could be somebody who's protecting him. Okay, I think I'm exhausted. I think I've exhausted this topic. So what do we got? Uh, Tavares's testimony, not a huge deal, but it would see it will complete the picture. I see Woodward uh, protesting it and Cannon not allowing this uh, Tavares to testify, or if he is allowed to testify, it's so narrow in scope that. Uh, He's neutered somewhat. And maybe the, the narrowing scope is you're not allowed who if anybody asked you to lie. You know, protecting Woodward in this case. Um, will Woodward face any trouble with this one? I'd love to say yes, but I'm not just not seeing it at this point. A little disappointing because we kind of want justice for everybody, especially crooked lawyers and uh, things like, and, and crooked judges who are owe favors to people for entertainment purposes only. But that's not what the cards are saying. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I could be wrong. Free will and all that. Things can change. Uh, but if not, well, you heard it here first. The bigger thing is, I think they'll still, even with with or without Tavares, they're still going to get a conviction on this. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your likes and your shares and your comments. It feeds the YouTube algorithm beast which helps this video get out to new viewers. And to those new viewers who watched this and were entertained and informed, uh, thank you. Thank you for watching it. Why don't you go ahead and join us, subscribe to the channel so you get notifications. I put up two videos every night at midnight Pacific. At least that's the goal anyways. And um, thank you for joining and thank you for watching my video and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.